so-called American parent of today in many regards. Not in regards, but in some regards. Well, I do. Okay. I'm as good a parent as there is out there, even though I don't have any of my own children. And I don't raised, have enough experience. You know, you know, experience. But I, I, have, I helped out with my younger brother. Sure. Brothers, well, so I've not. had foster children and this and that, mm -hmm. and I've sent children to school and this and that. So I've, I've been through the gamut. I've uh, gotten kids. And look at you. You look great. That's right. I Don't tell me that I haven't suffered the pains. I had to give somebody information on, oh, gee, my girl, she's going to get an abortion. Had to get another kid out of jail on New Year's Eve for drunk driving. So, I remember that story. Yeah. Uh, I have, these are all my neighbor's kids who are afraid to call their parents, by the way. Oh, Uncle Howe. Yeah, or their, or their parents are out of town on a drunk. So that was years ago. Remember those stories? Oh, yeah. All right, so I consider myself as good a parent. Oh, you don't know. Yes, I do. I, I proclaim myself so. I'm an expert uh, on child rearing. Dun, da, da, da. What's wrong with these photographs in today's papers? Let me pop it oh, up those here. Are the, the young Indiana Joneses. Yes, I guess you can say the these are the <laughs> young adventurers. <laughs> now, yesterday, strange but true, I had correctly presented their case. I said, "What's wrong with three boys from Mayfield Heights?" Uh, Heights going out and seeking their fortune when, if this were 1892, this would be considered quite proper. Uh, G. Michael Landon, I'm your son, I'm 12, Ephus, and I'm going out to seek Ephus. my fortune. Well, Ephus, write Good occasionally. Yeah. Your mother will miss you. I, of course, will not. Da -da 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 -da. Here's a new horse. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then the little girl comes out and says, Ephus, Ephus, but you forgot tomorrow there's a quiz in school. Oh, well, okay, then I'll go on Wednesday. <laughs> and, and then the sun sets the music down, and then the commercial comes up. You've seen that, right? Tons of times. <clears throat> What's wrong with this flip of these boys being found at the Wycliffe McDonald's, where I've been there myself. Oh, but is there I've a shrine to you there? No, no. Uh, I, How about Chiswick McDonald's I bought the three shrine. millionth Big Mac there once. <laughs> Yes, there's a golden french fry there in my name. Anyhow, what's wrong with these boys who were discovered at the Wycliffe McDonald's? Wycliffe is up along the lake, by the way. Um, nice area. Yeah, not too far from the Richmond Heights Airport. <coughs> and so they were found there by a uh, french fry who called the police, and the boys were polite and crying, and they were returned to home. But what's oh, no. wrong with these photographs? Well, the parents look so happy. That's all right. Which is, they're being hugged. The kids are being hugged. That's fine. Which is fine. That's fine. So I guess there's really nothing wrong with the photographs. Nothing, Everybody was relieved that the kids came back. There's nothing wrong with the photograph, huh? All right, well now. There's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, everybody was happy that the kids yeah. came back. Well, this is. This, Everybody's glad. Yeah, this should be for, where's the after photograph? You mean the, the photograph that maybe should be in the pictures this morning? Yeah. In the papers? The rather? kids getting beaten real good for running away from for home. Scaring their scaring parents. Scaring the living daylights out of their parents. Oh, that's what I would have gotten. <coughs> You've scared us to death. I'm worried. Your grandmother's worried. Your aunts were worried. Your father was worried. Your, your mother-in-law was, was worried. We've been looking for you. Your dad missed work because he had to go look for you. Do you remember the story we told of the little boys from Kent, Ohio, ages 12, 13, and 14, who stole the cars, took them for a joyride? Oh, yeah, just out having some fun. <coughs> Actually, I think they stole a couple of cars, and they had to get the pillows to prop up the phone the, book. Then they sit on the phone book. They were sitting on pillows and phone books so they could see over the dashboard. Now, when discovered and the authorities came to get them, the parents beat their butts in public view on the streets of Kent, Ohio, suburban area. Okay? And what did the, what did the neighbors do who were watching? Uh, they applauded. Oh. <laughs> and the children of the neighbors had curious doubts that... Probably they would don't never want, drive Don't again. want this to happen to me. Now... Here are these children from Mayfield Heights. Apparently, the parents uh, either... They're oh, they're so just, relieved. They're so relieved. So relieved. <clears throat> yeah, it's like going to the men's room after 12 beers. So relieved. <laughs> and and Section Z. Why the aren't stadium. these children being beaten? Because the liberal Mamby Pambies have obviously disturbed the mental thoughts of parents everywhere. No, these children should have been hugged. And then... Hugged first and then... Whipped. Beaten. Yeah. Now, God, I know what a good... Now, these some of these kids have to be Italian because that's all that lives in Mayfield Heights. You know, uh, I mean, Michael Brando. These. That sounds Italian. Mike Marlon Brando? <clears throat> Michael Brando and his mother. Then here is Eric Turney. Okay. And who was the other boy? Um, there's a third boy here. I can't see the name, but it's here somewhere. Anyhow, so... They were brothers, weren't they? <clears throat> oh, two of them brothers? maybe they were. 
They I were was under the, that there was a younger boy. Yeah, that's right. The groundskeeper at the Manikiki Golf Course, which is in the Metro Parks, uh, shooed the boys away at 5:45 Tuesday. Apparently, they might have been, you know, uh, homesteading, homesteading on the 15th <laughs> fairway, kind of sheltered children trying to probably. Have a Gee, cook, let's go to the golf course. A cook stove fire over the 15th fairway, right, Janet? <coughs> now, what would your mother have done? I tell you, honestly, <coughs> yes. Well, she I would have been very happy to, to find that, uh, that I was safe and unharmed, and everybody would have been relieved, but I would have gotten a lecture and a couple of good whacks. You points. would have been beaten. I know it. Uh, my father would, of course, ask permission to use my credit card since I have more money than he does. Uh, oh, <laughs> Well, that's the way it is well, in some suburbs. What would you if you would have left your mom a note and said, "Ciao, see you whenever I come back"? The correct answer is the, later. What would have happened to you? The correct answer is a person when I was young of my intelligence would have never gone. Well, but what if? No, no, there is no what if because my well, life I never would have gone. My either. life as a child was near perfect. I, <laughs> I had keep forgetting. All, I had all my clothes like this and all this like everything, and all my baseball said, cards like that. I would have said, "Oh, you boys are going to run away from home and seek an adventure. All the adventure I want is here oh, at home." I don't buy that one for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> are you giving me the raspberries? <laughs> yes. Don't I can't believe it. you're giving me the raspberries. <laughs> so, of course, see, like on the Brady Bunch, oh, Greg, you know you're in serious trouble. Oh, yes, Mother, I promise not to ask, uh, what was the name of the maid? It was Schultze in one... Alice. S Alice. She was Schultze in the old Bob Cummings show, but Bob's dead. Whatever he used to call our show. Bob Cummings used to call our show when he was at the carousel. Anyhow, so Alice... Oh, I want Alice's chocolate chip cookies. Punishment enough. Oh, you've suffered, Greg. They never used to whip the children on those oh, shows. Oh, on the Brady Bunch. Oh, heavens no. But they did on the old Danny Thomas show. Did they ever on Leave it to Beaver? Did he ever get hit? He was supposed to. How about the Donna Reed show? Oh, no, 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 no. You couldn't hit Jeff. <laughs> he had a hit record. <laughs> oh. But they did beat Rusty. Who's on the Rusty? Danny Thomas show. Oh, uh, they uh, did? Yes. Oh, they beat him off in. Uh, father, no. For uh, what? For anything. They would take, oh. out the old, <laughs> they'd take out the old hairbrush and beat his butt. Make course, room for daddy. Make room for daddy. Now, I'm sure there's no correlation between that and recently Rusty committed suicide in real life. So I'm sure that's not at all possibly related. You don't want to parallel those two That's instances. right. Now, of course, on the Michael Landon show, Little House on the Prairie, he, uh, Albert got whipped occasionally. Now Michael Landon is dead. Now, I'm sure there's no correlation. To well, Michael Landon has, what, like 20 kids? Yes, own? and a nanny who is suing the family because she has dirt on Michael Landon. Oh. She says, Michael Landon was angel. Everybody thought he was, and I'd like to tell you the stories. And the family has got, sought a restraining order to have her beaten to death. Sort of. To death? Well, no. maybe <laughs> it's not. kind of harsh from the Landons. Kind of, kind of harsh for a restraining <laughs> for order. little Joe. All right, so we'll just, nobody else believes Janet and I, but we have down-home values. After, true or false? After your children had been missing for 48 hours... And, and if, you, if, they, if you knew they left... Well, these boys left notes saying, we are was, going to do this. There was a note. There was a note. But you don't know what could have happened to them when they no. hit the dangerous road. Oh, exactly. And sure, you're worried. Without a doubt, right. you're extremely worried. But I just want to know if anybody would have been angry as well. Oh, well I the would've. kids took off. Proper punishment. They should have asked the cameras to leave. Here is this boy. Look, here is Eric turning and his dad. I'm never going to be like this, Dad. We were scared out there. Yes, you don't know what kind of animals you can encounter on the 16th green over at Manikiki Golf Course. <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like some wild putter or something. They have a lot of cruel people in Wycliffe. The underwear bandit is from there. Right? And who was the other one more, more recently? Oh, the BVD bandit. The BVD bandit. Oh, he wasn't a Haynes person. No. <laughs> Our story over here... Has American parents, even though that should be a singular word, has the American parent wimped out and what's proper? These boys should have been beaten. And so should have been the 11-year-old boy who held up Dairy Mart. Oh, in twice. <laughs> frequently. Okay, uh, we've got other things. Uh, where are um, Gee, the Kent State football player, whom we assumed was innocent. <coughs> whose parents me, believed. Whose parents believed he was innocent. Uh, and was uh, had all the charges dropped on a robbery 
back in June may not have been totally cleared from that one. Well, they're kind of saying now they're just going to bring it to the grand jury. Yes. So he could be indicted for a separate uh, robbery. See, he's wanted in the Domino's robbery on June 17th. That's the one he is currently in jail for. <clears throat> uh, let's see. He'll probably will be charged. <laughs> now, I'm a bit curious here. Oh, I see. He was supposedly involved in the Domino's Pizza robbery June 17th. That's the one he is charged with right now. Then he and a buddy, he was in the buddy's car... At McDonald's, July 24th, supposedly snitched on the buddy, right? If that's the McDonald's holding, Right, it's yes. McDonald's. And then they're saying that the buddy may have snitched on him to nab him in the June 17th robbery. Yes. But there's also a June 27th robbery at Kentucky Fried Chicken in Stowe. Who's responsible for that? They don't know, but they're investigating that maybe it was him. I see. So let's see here. Domino's Pizza, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, a little high in cholesterol, but it could get you in trouble, right? Huh? <laughs> what do you think about that? So the parents who are standing out there on crime, are they aware of potential crimes B and C? Well, they thought, thought that the McDonald's crime was, was <clears throat> dropped, or the McDonald's charge was dropped, but now the prosecutor's saying, oh, no, it just wasn't presented at that time, and we instead just are presenting it to the grand jury. All right. The man who received the baboon liver, save the baboon, save the baboon, said the wimpy animal rights people. He had AIDS. Prior to or after? Uh, the baboon didn't give him AIDS. He had AIDS prior. I have a funny feeling that the animal rights people now would side with him if they knew he had AIDS. Because animal rights people are pro-AIDS people and pro-abortion. Strange. Hmm. I can't understand it. Anyhow, he had AIDS. He was going to die anyhow. Maybe that's why they performed the experiment. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to see he could live. Mm -hmm. Put that over here. Clark Clifford may never get a chance to have his name cleared. The, um, the courts may rule that, uh, well, we're not going to court because you're an old goat. I'm sorry. Oh. He's <laughs> an 85-year-old old goat. He may, he may get off without having to stand trial because it's not polite to put old goats on trial. Speaking of old goats, <laughs> the Iran-Contra probe will end next week. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, it's, it's not. It's going to be over? It's over. Let's see, that's Roy Orbison. Uh, hits the high note. It's over. <laughs> and uh, Donald and Ronald Reagan will not be indicted. It's over. <clears throat> you lose all you Democrats who had to spend hundreds of millions of dollars that Somalians in Homestead, Florida. Somalian Homestead, Florida. Might as well bring him here. It'll be easier to feed him. We got the place already set up, right? Might as well kill birds with one stone. But uh, Reagan and Reagan will not be indicted, and the Iran-Contra probe will end. That does sound sort of sexual, the Iran-Contra probe. Anyhow, the affair will end. Oh, again, the affair. And next week, it's over. That's it, kaput. It's over. You didn't get Ronald Reagan. Ha, ha, ha. He, and Nancy will beat their daughter just in your name again next week. <laughs> we covered all the bases. <laughs> what do you think about that? Hi. Uh, Hey, Ronnie, we beat the Iran Contra Fair. Let's go beat our daughter for being on Larry King, huh? Oh, and everywhere. She's been everywhere this okay, week. Okay, she's everywhere. She's, she's everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> so the Iran Contra will end. Ha, ha, ha. Regan and Reagan won't be indicted. They beat you, boy. <laughs> Remember the last line of Ferris Bueller, the movie? I never saw that movie. Oh. The audience is still sitting there. He's going, what are you doing here? It's over. Go home. So you are on Contra Fair. Oh, it's not good. You... I'll bet you I get a call. Oh, it's not going to be over. It's over. You lose. That's all. Goodbye. Just like the Browns. You lose. Nobody's going to buy the tickets. Okay. Let's see what else. We have the question. Judge asks a young lady in order to avoid notification of their parent for an abortion. All right. This is the maturity test. This is the maturity test. What is your school history and your work history? Go ahead, answer that. No, don't answer that. Were you using any methods of birth control at the time of pregnancy? Does the father of the fetus... Oh, they didn't say the baby, did they? Ooh. the father of the fetus know the pregnancy? Yes, I informed him during high school football practice. Hey, Joe! Hey, you remember that 38 pitch right you took? Well, the one on me didn't work so well. 
Okay, that's a little football and sex little together. Football humor. Were you in a relationship with the father during the pregnancy? And... <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> or the insane. backfield. Or the band or the backfield. Were you in a relationship with the offensive line Howard, during the break? Those are unfair. Those, that doesn't say that. I'll be good. <laughs> Were you in a relationship with the father pregnancy? If so, how long did it last? Are you still in this relationship? Are you consider, uh, have you considered other options? Hmm? Do you think an abortion would be best for you? That's why I'm coming to you, clown. <laughs> That's her answer. <laughs> no, I, I'm just standing here humiliating myself for no reason at all. Where did you get the information about abortion providers? From uh, the, the family, what is that called? Family planning. But the, what's the name of the group? What's, what's the name of the group? I don't know which uh, I've gone by now. That's Thursday. What will you do if your request is denied? Probably put a hole in the judge. What, what are you supposed to say? Uh, the future educational employment plans. She intends to probably go out and get pregnant again next month, right? And have you seen any constantly? No, but I've seen Ann Landers. All right. Anybody think that this is a fine test of our young women to avoid telling parents they are pregnant and seeking an abortion? You didn't read. There was another. There was a. Oh. What plans have you made to prevent few planned pregnancies? No, there's a. <clears throat> the rest of your life, knowing that you've kept a secret from your parents. Oh. Uh, oh, willing to live the rest of your life keeping a secret from your parents. What would happen to your relationship with them if they found out? Nothing. Please say congratulations. Yeah, that would go over big in the 50s, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Let's keep a secret from your parents that you got pregnant and aborted the baby. Yep, that goes over big. Uh, are off the hook, tra-la, tra -la. But Don't, the Democrats aren't. But the Democrats aren't. Now, I'm going to balance this out because Bush has said, no more taxes, no more taxes. Great, you're going to lose, so what difference is it going to make? Right? Bush is coming out with a, you know, the last time I promised no new taxes and didn't keep my word, this time. I mean I it. I mean it. Well, that's what H. Ross Perot is going to say. Remember when I said <laughs> I was going to run for president? Well, this, this time, time, I mean, I mean it. it. It doesn't go over too big anymore in America. Nobody believes you. We don't you. buy it. No. So Bush is prom promising speech tonight. No more taxes. Great. Unfortunately, he's going to lose, so what's the difference, right? <clears throat> However, in the meantime, there are some angry Democrats, including the highly controversial Louis Stokes, the highly les... Uh, um, highly controversial. The highly controversial Mary Rose o les Ocar. Ocar, sorry. And Edward Fee, it doesn't count because he's quitting. He ran as fast as he could. Let's see here. U.S. Representative Ralph Regula and Mike DeWine, both Republicans, have received... I got a letter! I got a letter! From, <laughs> from the Justice Department That's saying... That's what I used to do when I was like 10. If I, I got, got a letter! I got a look, letter! Mom, look! I got a letter! I got a letter from the Justice Department. I'm cleared I'm of the free. House banking mode. <clears throat> also, Republicans Wiley Chalmers or Chalmers Wiley, depending on where you put the comp, and Mike <laughs> Oxley. I got a letter, I got a letter, I'm, I'm free. free. I, I've been set free by the Justice Department. However, you Democrats, including Louis Stokes, Mary Rose Ocar, and Ed Fien, his check bouncers in America, all from the same county. What a coincidence. Uh, of course, uh, they're all going to get reelected except Fian because he made the mistake of quitting as if the American people remembered, Ed. Anyhow, they didn't get a letter. <laughs> Federal Judge Malcolm Wilkie, who was sending out these uh, get-out-of-jail-free oh, cards. <laughs> I got a letter. I got a letter. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. So it from the Republicans and the Democrats. The Republicans have been cleared. The House banking scandal is basically a Democratic problem. And so was um, Keating 5. Keating 5 was a dead problem. But oh no, everybody blames Bush's son. Yeah, he was responsible. Yeah, everybody re blames Bush's son for being house banking for the, all the scandal. It's not. It's not true. He was a member of the board on a bank. Just because he was a little crooked. Yeah, big just, time. Big I mean, deal. What could he have done to prevent it? That's you know? right. I'm it was sure. Just one little vote. Just because he wanted a loan, <laughs> anybody's allowed to get a loan. Come on. <laughs> What else here? <laughs> Seventy percent of Ohioans favor the labeling proposal. If anything that should be in this package might be cancerous causing. 
How come the other side says this was e an evil thing here? They, they don't really say it's an evil thing. They say that the cost of labeling all the items would okay. fall we'll, upon the small businesses. Well, we'll pay for it. And a lot, well, we're not going. That's not included. No. <laughs> the payment would, we're, we're gonna would pay fall for it upon anyway. the small businesses, and a lot of small businesses couldn't afford it. Yeah, all right, so then go out of business. It's the American way. Uh, not. Um... I don't think I should tell this story. Oh, 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 we'll tell this one story. <clears throat> Dear Howard, we'd like you to come next week and speak to our... It's a nice thing. Yes, at 11 a.m. <laughs> There's a slight problem there. And then uh, we're making that one up. And then I'll get a call, and Janet will get a call. To attend a meeting on behalf of the um, Northeast uh, Construction Workers Planning Aid. When is it? Uh, 9 o'clock. Eh, not really. We sort of work. And then we've sort of discovered that the rest of America doesn't realize that broadcasters actually work for a living, right? It, it's difficult to, to leave your <coughs> air shift time when to attend other doings and functions. Congratulations, Howard. You were elected to the Cleveland Heights High School Hall of Fame, yay, alma mater. Yay, we yay. want you to speak to the, uh, to the along with the other 4,800 people being inducted. <laughs> Nothing like keeping it in the family. <laughs> 48 also being inducted. Address the uh, school at 9.30. Not really. Can't do it. Sorry. Well, when will you be speaking to our college? No, probably never, unless you have night classes. See, I, I got an idea because on Tuesday, I'm driving this very busy stretch of highway, and there were no cars on it. And on, I Tuesday? On, on Monday, I drove it, and there were no cars on it. Labor Day. It was a holiday. Mm -hmm. But also, nobody went to work Tuesday. Why not? You were supposed because to go back to work on Tuesday. Well, of course, but it was the day after a working day. But I didn't or think holiday. anybody worked on Friday. No, they didn't do that either. The roads were very much cleared. On Friday? I have a funny feeling that really a lot of Americans just don't work. And Why they, not? And they think we don't either. Well, we'd like you to come to this meeting. When is it? At 10? <clears throat> not hardly. Won't be there. Have a nice time. <clears throat> oh, come on. Get in it tonight. I am uh, emceeing a banquet for uh, the Rittner family up at uh, Pine Ridge uh, oh, I know them. Country Club, up in Wycliffe, down the street from the McDonald's, where the boys were found. Uh, Ronnie Rittner, a wonderful man, passed away a year or so ago, and they're setting up a scholarship fund oh, for him. Oh, how nice. And uh, everybody's taking the day off to go play golf. And they, you know, everybody's, Howard, you want to join our foursome? Not hardly. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it's not uh, Ron, uh, the it's Rittner's nice family. It's nice to be invited. That's a nice thing. thing. Sure. We must be living in the 50s, Janet, because we, we just, we're not flexible, I guess. What was the other little quickie story? And then we'll get on to our show here. Um, this is a funny one. <laughs> not hardly. Um, how come inner city youths always have to curse? See? Uh, yesterday, I was standing over here next to my good friend, the doctor. The while, doctor. Yeah, my good friend, the doctor. He's the one who looks like Chris Christofferson, so I don't like to stand too close to the good doctor because I don't look so good compared to him. But uh, my friends know which good doctor he is. Dr. Jack, okay? All right. You ever say, hi, Jack? Hi, Jack. Yeah, doc, <laughs> he looks just like Chris Christofferson. That's what all the ladies say. So Dr. Jack and I am standing over here. We're watching this little football game over there. And all of a sudden, a ball comes over the fence. Okay? And conks you on the head. Well, almost. But, oh. uh, and we're about to throw the ball back to some youths who were playing, hey, kids. throwing Catch. a ball around. And the ball said, so and school junior varsity. Near the school, so you just assume that they were on the team. It said, throw us back our ball. And, and Dr. Jack said, well, well, wait a second. Are you a member of the team that's written right across the side of the ball, so-and-so school junior varsity? And they they said, said, no, sure. I, I bought that ball. Oh, they bought it? They bought it. Personalized. That's right. <laughs> and then the one kid said, well, my brother went to that school. He's 28. And I said, yeah, he probably just graduated yesterday. Ah! <laughs> So the one kid's now getting a bit obnoxious. Throw us back our ball. And Dr. Are they were getting mean to you? Oh, yeah, they were getting mean. Oh. I mean, I was called Baldy and Chubbo and things like that. And Dr. Jack was called Chris Christofferson. Look at the difference in the insult. <laughs> so we were trying to say, but boys, you see, this ball was either left and then you stole it. Ooh. You shouldn't say that to inner city use. Don't accuse. That's right. Allegedly stole yeah. it. <laughs> so he, they probably just finders, keepers, losers, weepers, right? 
Well, we, so you lose. You lose. Wow. Now, now, here's the thing where this ball was obviously left before or after this game we're watching, right? But they were telling you that they purchased this ball. We bought this ball, and, and Dr. Jack says, but look, it says so-and-so school junior varsity oh, on well, it. Well, I bought it for my brother. He's 28. And the kid said, we bought it and wrote that on the side. Oh, give me a How break. come inner city youths can't come up with anything better than that? I mean, then they got into that, you know, inner city foul mouth stuff. They weren't swearing. Oh, yeah. Cursing with that mother ucker stuff. Oh, no. So we were going to let them use the ball, but we did the, what any white people would do. Tell them, go get your own. We no, didn't do no, that. we didn't do that. <laughs> we we decided, even though the one boy was cursing, we let them have the ball anyway. I mean, oh. in wholesale, it's only eleven dollars. So <laughs> what's the difference? So he said, "Hey, we just want you to know, going to the school, uh, I was." And you're saying, "Well, you're giving away public school. No, it's a private school." Oh well. So I mean, it, we, we would be allowed to give away a public school ball. No, they'd have to put a levy on that. That's though. right. <laughs> So what we're saying is, City use the next time you find something and a property of Akron University on the side... Erase it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good influence you are. Uh, Wasn't very nice with the man from Fairlawn said about you. Of course, he said it about me, too. I can take it. I, I was almost going to giggle, but I didn't think that would be appropriate at this time. <laughs> People from Fair... That man from Fairlawn must have poor taste in a radio. Oh, well, hey, you know... At least they spelled the name correctly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Capital G and everything. We've been around a while. When are you coming over, by the way? What do you mean, when am I coming over? Well, you can't I, ask these public things Yes, like I this. can, because that's exactly what people think. Uh, last night, I was emceeing the Ronnie Rittner Memorial Scholarship uh, Dinner, and... Uh, Everybody, you know, buy these little little side raffle tickets, you oh, see? Oh, sure. For a buck or so, yeah, a couple bucks, what whatever. And then I they put, and I read the number was mine. <laughs> you, I, you what? You mean you pulled your own ticket? Well, we, they weigh a lot of prizes. Yeah. I mean, a dozen or so, you know. And I, they pulled out the ticket, and I go, oh, zero, one, zero, that's mine. <laughs> so what'd you win? I won this enormous uh, wicker basket, a gourmet-looking wicker basket. Oh, the basket very alone trendy. had to be seventy dollars. Just maybe it's this big. How big? It was this big. Wow, that's big. That's huge. Anyhow, it was full of gourmet Italian things oh, to cook. Oh, yum! And I got. What is the terminology for a cluster of garlic or a gaggle of geese or what? They had clumps of fresh garlic, and in there was the garlic press. And there was pasta. Cloves, garlic cloves. Gar garlic cloves, thank you. I knew it wasn't, you know, like... Bunches. Bunches. And there was these gourmet dry tomatoes in a bag. Oh, oh I'm and jealous. And it had olives and wine and just like 10 or 12 or another, a couple dozen of all this stuff. Now, I was going to give it to my neighbor over here, but she's Irish, so she wouldn't know what to do with that. Right.